The next stop in our learning about forecasting is something called a moving average. A moving average is represented up here in this expression. Uh, a moving average and a regular average are truly not that different, right? If I think about it, uh, if I spelled this out, that would be one nth times a three, for example, plus one nth times a two plus one nth times a one. That would be my first number. That would be how I get this first number in this uh, moving average approach. The weight would be the coefficient on each of the a terms. Well, here, the coefficient's equal. It's always one nth. Well, what if those coefficients weren't equal? Oh, by the way, I guess we should notice too that one nth plus one nth plus one nth equals n over n or one. So my weights are adding up to one. Well, over here, the weights are also going to have to add up to one. So I can see that, yeah, 0.8 point plus 0.1 plus 0.1 does add up to one. Uh, in order for me to use this expression as it sits, I have to have these weights adding up to one. Next thing I want to observe, what is this saying? Well, this is saying I am going to put the heaviest weight on the most recent experience with demand and a lighter weight on some of the past experiences with demand. How will this change my picture? Well, for one thing, it will make my forecast move faster to whatever was last. Well, I should say, as long as the greatest weight is on the last thing I forecast, it's, it's going to move faster. I'll show it in a picture. That might be the easiest way. Now, Excel does not have a methodology for calculating a weighted average. In other words, there's no function like average for weighted average. But Here's what I can do. It does have a function for this. I need the sum, so I'm going to start with the sum of products. So I'm going to use the function sum product. If I have three weights, then I need three pieces of historical information and the weights that are associated with them. Now, those weights are not going to change as I do my copying. So I'm going to make that into an absolute reference by pushing F4 and getting those dollar signs as you see them. Okay. This is going to give me my first weighted average forecast for this data set. Now my weighted average forecast is always going to take 0.8 times the youngest of the historical data, 0.1 by the middle child, and 0.1 times the oldest, excuse me, yeah, the oldest piece of data. So the way I have it set up with the absolute reference, it, it's always going to stay that way. I'll have 0.8, for example, let's go this one. Let me copy it one time. This number comes from 0.8 times 92, 0.1 times 89, plus 0.1 times 83 and my forecast is 90.8, okay? And I can do this copying. Now, I have and can only forecast one time period into the future, but I can't do a forecast for time period 17. I, I guess this is the first time I thought of this, but I can't do a time period 17 forecast for any of the moving average or the naive forecast or the weighted average. I, I just, that's not possible. I don't have enough information historically. So maybe that's why you could think of it as a short-term planning type of forecast. Okay, I want to go ahead and draw a picture of this. So insert charts, and let's go ahead and put in a picture. Notice that this is substantially different than the moving average. See, the moving average took out all the bumps. My weighted average put the bumps back in. Well, why did it put the bumps back in? Because in the weighted average, when I calculated the forecast at this point I'm trying to circle, the most weight was put on the time period just before, and then less weight on the prior two time periods. 
but because it used information from the past three time periods, uh, it still kind of picked up that motion that happened as we slid through here. Now, of course, the question, as always, is going to be, does this make my error smaller than just a moving average? And at some point, not that far into the future, we will be able to answer that question. All right, so weighted average. I'll type that in here so we don't forget what we were doing. Remember, there is no such thing as a weighted average function in Excel, at least not that I know of. But this sum product function will do the weighted average. My weights are not changing as I move. And it's always, in this case, the heavier weight on the most recent piece of data. It doesn't have to be that way. Maybe the most important or significant piece of data is the one three time periods ago. Well, then I put my weight bigger down here. Notice, I don't think we got a better forecast. I still have those bumps, but the bumps are later into the forecast. Why? Well, because the most significant piece of information here at time period 11 is what happened in time period 10, 9, 8 is over here in 8. So, you know, a little bit different positioning. All right, hopefully this works for you with the weighted average. It's not that much different than the moving average. All I'm doing is instead of having an equal weight on every variable, I have a different weight on each historical value. Thank you.